Realme 9 series is finally out. Realme introduced not one, but two Pro models which are the Realme 9 Pro and the 9 Pro Plus. This is the successor of the Realme 8S 5G of the last year, while the Pro Plus is for the 8 Pro. Today, we will test this gaming performance and try out some of the games that we usually play. Mabuhay Manila, this is Jacob from manilashaker.com and this is our gaming review of the Realme 9 Pro. First and foremost, let's talk about its design. There is no dare to leap catch phrases on its back which is I'm not really a fan of. It is not that heavy even though it is packed with a large battery and its back is made out of polycarbonate plastic with a glossy finish. And as you can see, there is a glittering effect which is nice but it is pretty much prone to fingerprint smudges. As for its display, it boasts a 6.6 inch IPS LCD panel with an FHD plus resolution. Alongside is a 120Hz refresh rate, so navigating the UI is smooth but it will consume battery. Although, we still have the option to set it to automatic where it will adjust based on what you are doing. As for its specs, its chipset is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 paired with an Adreno 695 GPU. According to some, the Snapdragon 695 is not that good in terms of gaming, but we will find out later if it's true. The configuration of our review unit is 8GB of RAM paired with 128GB of storage. It also runs on Android 12 slapped with Realme UI 3.0. As for the camera, it carries a triple camera setup which is equipped with a 64MP main, 8MP ultrawide, and 2MP macro. All of those specs and features are backed with a 5000 mAh of battery which is paired with a 33 watts fast charging. So we will begin our gaming test with a fully charged device to also test its battery performance. Our first game is Mobile Legends. By default settings are already maxed out and the refresh rate is set to high and ultra graphics quality. We are not expecting a poor performance here since pretty much any device can run Mobile Legends as long as you have enough RAM to run it. As for its gameplay, it runs smoothly with no visible frame drops or stuttering. The colors are crisp and also details are visible. Even at clashes and multiple skills are visible on the screen, the performance didn't even budge. So with the max settings, we get 60 FPS with 100% stability. Next is the Mobile Legends Wild Rift. As usual, by default, our settings are set to quality, which is the lowest setting. So we will be bumping it up to 60 frames and ultra high graphics quality and turn on some other effects as well. We don't know why, but still even though we have a 120Hz display higher refresh rate, the settings is still grayed out. Anyways, for its gameplay, it is smooth and not that clanky. Although, we did encounter some frame drop when I'm casting my ultimate in the mid clash, but all in all, it was great. We wish one day Riot would let us surpass the 60fps mark so that we can fully utilize the refresh rates of our displays. So with that, the max available settings, we get around 58 to 60 fps with 98% stability. Now let's move forward to FPS games and start it off with Call of Duty Mobile. By default settings are set to high graphics quality and high frame rates, but we can go up to the max for the frame rates and very high for the GFX. Although we can pair both very high graphics quality to max frames too, so we will be sticking with high graphics with max frames. As for the performance, it is smooth, we didn't encounter any frame drops or stuttering during all the gunfights. Even aiming down your sights and shooting is pretty fluent. So with the high graphics quality plus max frames, we get about 59 to 60 FPS with 99% stability. Next is PUBG Mobile. By default, our settings are set to HD graphics and high frame rates. Ultra is available via balance and smooth graphics quality, so we will be sticking with the balance one so that we can utilize the refresh rate. For its gameplay, it is smooth, although we did encounter some minor frame drops when jumping off the plane. Rendering also takes time, so oftentimes you will see a blank patch from afar. 
Although in a gunfight, other aspects it is pretty much solid, so with the balanced graphics quality and ultra frames, we get about 50 to 53 FPS with 98% stability. Now let's move forward to MiHoYo Devs games and to start it off with Honkai Impact 3. By default settings are set to quality, we won't be bumping all its settings but instead we will just set the FPS to 60 in both combat and out of combat. For its gameplay, surprisingly it is pretty much smooth with no frame drops or stuttering encounter during combat. FPS was consistent and also no heating on the device. Casting multiple skills doesn't hurt its performance as well so playing Honkai on this device is pretty good. So with the recommended settings with 60 FPS on both combat and out of combat, we get about 58 to 60 FPS with 99% stability. For our last game, we have the Genshin Impact which is a very demanding game. By default settings are set to low, let's stick with that and bump the FPS to 60. It started smooth, and as we work ourselves around the map, frames are starting to stutter. Is it playable? Yes, but of course, you have to be patient since it is a bit clanky. So with the low settings plus 60 FPS, we get about 40 to 45 FPS with 97% stability. As for the battery performance, after 1 hour and 45 minutes of gaming, our battery dropped from 100 to 83%. That is fairly good considering it is a 5000 mAh of battery and for its charging, it is paired with a 33 watts fast charging. Juicing up the 5000 mAh of battery took us about 1 hour and 20 minutes. Overall, gaming on the Realme 9 Pro 5G is quite impressive. Even though some said that the chipset is not that on par with the device itself, still, it delivers some great results to our game tests. It played well on MOBA games, FPS games, and even AAA titles like Genshin. Although, if you want to play MiHoYo games, we would suggest that you opt for a higher model or even a different device to fully enjoy Genshin's playthrough. Apart from the impressive gaming performance, we also have an impressive design and build paired with a decent display that offers a high refresh rate. So for the price of 16,990 SRP, I can say that you're getting more than what you paid for. So that is our gaming review of the Realme 9 Pro 5G. Stay tuned because we will also talk about the 9 Pro Plus. What do you guys think about this device? Let us know in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you will be updated for our future contents. Also, don't forget to visit manilashaker.com for more tech news, reviews, and comparison of the latest device. Once again, this is Jacob and Mabuhay, Manila.